Last time, we left off wondering what insight came to Dean Pomerleau that caused him to rethink his end-to-end self-driving algorithm, Alvin. As we saw last time, end-to-end machine learning algorithms like Alvin are very powerful, but do come with some very real trade-offs. Alvin was able to quickly learn to steer from human driving data. However, if and when Alvin made an incorrect prediction or found itself in an environment too different from the data it was trained on, the only really viable fix was to stop and retrain the system. If we take, for example, our Alvin implementation from part two that was trained on a few counterclockwise laps of track data and simply change the direction of travel of our testing set to clockwise, our performance falls apart. Our Alvin implementation only learned to turn left because our data set only included left turns. This is, of course, an extreme example. As we've seen, given the appropriate training data, shallow end-to-end -end neural networks like Alvin are very capable of learning to turn both left and right across a wide variety of environments. And deep end-to-end -end networks can learn many more complex behaviors. But the big issue here is that problems in end-to-end -end systems require end-to-end -end fixes. In the case of Alvin, given the computational limitations of the time and the relatively low capacity of the network, this would mean frequent stops to collect new human driving data and retrain as road types and conditions changed. If Pomerlo was going to drive mostly autonomously across the US, he needed a solution that gave him more low-level analytical control, still leveraged the power of learning from data, and was capable of rapidly adapting to the wide variety of conditions he would encounter in a coast-to-coast -coast drive without having to stop and retrain. Fortunately, a flash of inspiration came to Dean late one snowy Colorado evening in 1994. Driving home from a DARPA meeting with CMU professor Chuck Thorpe, Dean began to think about how he, as a human driver, was able to follow the road. The road edges and lane markers were totally covered by the snow, and the only really usable visual feature Dean could see were the tracks in the snow left by other vehicles. However, Dean's brain had no problem processing these fuzzy visual features to figure out how to steer the vehicle. This is when Dean realized that it was the consistent appearance of these fuzzy features as they stretched into the distance ahead of the car that was allowing me to steer the vehicle, not any single invariant feature like a lane marker at a particular location. It hit me that this consistency could be captured and represented one-dimensionally by unwrapping the road curvature and projecting downward onto a line. By trying various unwrappings and seeing which one resulted in a linear representation with the strongest peaks and valleys, an algorithm could capture and reason about whatever regularities there were in the appearance of the road ahead. Let's unpack Dean's idea. In practice, Dean began by sampling a trapezoidal region of the road ahead and resampling these pixels into a low-resolution, rectangular, black-and-white image. The trapezoidal region was carefully chosen to have a constant width in world space, around 7 meters. Now, Dean's idea here was to search for any consistent features, such as lane markers or tracks in the snow, in this image patch. To achieve this, Dean began with a set of road curvature hypotheses. We can test how well each possible road curvature fits our data by using this curvature to unroll our image patch. For example, let's say that we want to test the hypothesis that the road ahead is curved to the right, following a circle with a radius of curvature of 250 meters. Using this 250 meter to the right hypothesis, we can compute exactly how far to the left we would need to shift each pixel row in our image patch to exactly remove the curvature of the road. Now, if our curvature hypothesis is correct, when we shift each pixel row by our computed distances, the features in our resulting image should become linear. Dean tested each shifted image by vertically summing the shifted pixel values into a single vector that he called a scan line. Now, what would a good scan line look like here? If our curvature hypothesis is correct, and we've properly unwrapped and linearized our image, and our road patch has nice consistent features, such as lane markers or tracks in the snow, then our feature pixels should be nicely vertically aligned in our shifted image. Since the features in our image have either consistently larger or consistently smaller intensity values than their neighbors, when we sum our pixels vertically, our road features should result in a noticeable spike or dip in our scan line. 
To measure the intensity of these spikes or dips, Dean used a simple heuristic. He computed the five largest adjacent scan line differences and added these values together into a single score. To figure out which curvature hypothesis best linearizes our image patch, all we have to do is pick the curvature that generates the highest score. Notice that it doesn't matter what our road features actually are. As long as they are consistent and follow the curvature of the road itself, when properly unwrapped, these features will result in peaks or valleys in our scan line and generate a high score relative to the scores generated by incorrect unwrappings. In practice, this meant that Dean's new approach could measure the curvature of the road ahead using a wide variety of image features, such as lane markers, oil stains, light and dark regions on the pavement, and even tracks in the snow. Dean called his new system the Rapidly Adapting Lateral Position Handler, or RALF for short. Now, we've seen how RALF is able to estimate the curvature of the road ahead. But to steer a vehicle safely autonomously, we need one more piece of information. We need to know the location of the center line of the road. Notice that up until this point, our description of RALF has been entirely analytical. We haven't introduced any components that learn from data. To find the center of the road, Dean used a clever learning strategy, where Ralph learned a centered or reference scan line. The Ralph system included a number of methods for learning these scan lines. The simplest and most manual method involves learning a centered scan line from a short sample of human driving. While the car was under human control and well centered on the road, the driver would press a button on the dashboard, triggering Ralph to capture and unroll the current road image into a scan line. Since the vehicle is centered on the road, we know that the center of this reference scan line must correspond to the center of the road. Now, entering autonomous mode, we can compare our current scan line to our reference scan line. By sliding our current scan line over our reference scan line, and for each offset computing the correlation between our two scan lines, we can determine which offset produces the best alignment. This offset value is directly proportional to the current lateral offset of the vehicle on the road and gives us an estimate for the center line of the road ahead. This information, combined with the road curvature estimate determined while unrolling our image patch, was then fed into a controls algorithm that produced a new steering angle to keep the vehicle centered on the road. Now, as you can imagine, manually taking over control every time road conditions change and pressing a button to tell Ralph to learn a new scan line does not make for a great autonomous driving experience and would make it difficult to drive across the US mostly autonomously. To reduce the need for human takeover, Ralph included three other methods for determining reference scan lines. For common road types, Ralph stored a library of reference scan lines and was capable of choosing the scan line on the fly that best matched the current scan line. For slowly changing road conditions, Ralph would slowly update the reference scan line by taking a weighted average of the reference and current scan lines. And finally, when Ralph detected rapidly changing road conditions, the system would estimate new reference scan lines on the fly based on the appearance of the road 70 to 100 meters ahead. This clever blend of analytical and empirical techniques made the overall Ralph system highly adaptable and robust, ultimately driving 2,797 miles of Dean and Todd's 2,849-mile trip from Pittsburgh to San Diego. The trip included portions of road with partial or non-existent lane markers, tricky night and rain driving, and even sections of packed gravel with no lane markers. And that is how Dean and Todd made it across the U.S. 98% autonomously back in 1995. The Ralph system went on to be one of the key technologies showcased a couple years later at Demo 97, an enormous U.S. government-sponsored demonstration of autonomous driving systems. Through the course of the demonstration, Ralph safely drove thousands of visitors in the NavLab 6 through 10 vehicles, including two large city buses, up and down a 12-kilometer stretch of Highway I-15 in San Diego. The event included a wide variety of participants, demonstrating various approaches to automated driving, including more infrastructure-based approaches, such as following magnets embedded in the road instead of using cameras. Demo 97 was an enormous success, received wide press coverage, and was intended to be a big step 
towards a congressionally mandated fully autonomous highway prototype to be completed in 2002. However, like the ALV program before, the automated highway system was shut down early in favor of shorter term initiatives. Happily, the Ralph story doesn't end there. Dean and Todd went on to found Assistware, where they commercialized Ralph for use in lane departure warning systems. However, the defunding of the automated highway system marked a huge decrease in funding for research and development into fully autonomous vehicles, leading to a period in the late 90s and early 2000s that former Carnegie Mellon Robotics Institute director Chuck Thorpe calls the nuclear winter of autonomous driving. The dream of the fully autonomous car would largely lay dormant, especially in the U.S., for almost seven years. This would all change in March 2004, when 15 teams met in the Mojave Desert to compete for a $1 million prize in the first DARPA Grand Challenge. The U.S. government agency DARPA offered the prize to the fastest team to complete a 150-mile desert route completely autonomously. The 2004 DARPA Grand Challenge and the following DARPA challenges in 2005 and 2007 would spark a whole new breed of autonomous vehicle whose direct descendants are driving on our roads today. Next season, we'll dig into the systems that made these new vehicles work. Want early access to the next Welch Labs video? Consider backing Welch Labs on Patreon for early access to upcoming videos and other perks. There's some really cool videos of Ralph in action on YouTube. I've linked a few below. I've also linked a Jupyter Notebook, where you can play with my basic implementation of Ralph. Finally, a little Ralph trivia. I really enjoyed finding out that Dean and Todd partially funded their tour across America by selling t-shirts. The ordering page is actually still live. You may have noticed that they called their tour No Hands Across America. This name is a play off a 1980s fundraising effort, Hands Across America. The big idea behind Hands Across America was to form a single chain of people holding hands from coast to coast to raise money to fight poverty. The event had a huge turnout, approximately 6.5 million people. However, logistics prevented the forming of one continuous human chain. The event did, however, create an absolute gem of a star-studded 1980s power ballad. Thanks for watching.